Франция готова признать законной российской наследницей вас. Парижи готовы принять вас и помочь зайти на российский престол. Since the death of Peter the Great, France, which had been stirring up trouble in Russia, found another opportunity to tame Russia. The French ambassador, in possession of the edict, had a spite doctor compel Elizabeth to travel to France to prepare for the throne. France would then use Elizabeth, the puppet empress, as the fulcrum to take control of the Russian royal family and then Russia. But what the French didn't realize was that Elizabeth was not her mother Ekaterina, who had ambition but not the political skills to match. No matter how much the French spy doctor compelled Elizabeth, she realized that she had no desire for power. The second is that she understands that the French intentions are not good. The price for her becoming king is, at worst, a cession of territory. And thirdly, how could she, as Peter the Great's daughter and a Russian princess, commit an act of treason that would live in infamy? So Elizabeth drove the doctor away and told Baturin to deliver the French spy to the Empress. But Baturin didn't do it. After all, as Osterman's henchman, he was in no position to make decisions. Baturin told Osterman about it. Osterman was going to stay put. If they killed the doctor, the French would send new spies. Searching for new spies would be a time-consuming and labor-intensive endeavor. And Osterman suspected that the reason the French were compelling Elizabeth was because they had the edict. So Osterman ordered Baturin to approach the French as a traitor and help them compel Elizabeth to go to Paris. Then Osterman captures them at the harbor and finds out if they have the edict. With any luck, he'll be able to take Elizabeth and the edict in one fell swoop. And if that doesn't work out, it's not a bad idea to make Elizabeth out to be a traitor. Baturin is not happy. If Osterman doesn't save him later, he'll be executed for murdering the princess and trees. Osterman senses his thoughts and reminds him that he's just a guard who's guilty of a crime. And if he doesn't want to die, he'll have to do as he's told. Baturin is furious, but he does as he's told. He knew that he was like one of these specimens that Osterman had collected because he was useful. If he wasn't useful, Osterman would destroy him immediately. When Baturin returned to the palace, he couldn't wait to compel Elizabeth to elope. He deliberately avoided mentioning France as his destination so that Elizabeth wouldn't realize what he was really up to. To increase his leverage, Baturin offers marriage as a lure. Love struck Elizabeth immediately that agrees to Baturin's elopement. But she had to wait because she was worried about the safety of the three guards. As soon as the three guards returned safely, she would run away with Baturin. Baturin didn't dare to push her too hard for fear of being exposed. So he had to listen to her. And so the elopement plan was put on hold. Sometimes plans change. When Osterman's staff learned it of the plan, they pointed out the flaw in Elizabeth's treason plan. If Baturin's mutiny really did take Elizabeth to France, Elizabeth would be a restored empress with a testament in her hand. Baturin could become a general and no longer be under Osterman's control. And if the restoration succeeds, Elizabeth won't let go of Osterman, who has betrayed her repeatedly. Osterman hasn't been targeting Elizabeth because he wants to impress Ekaterina. He just wants to get rid of Elizabeth because he's afraid of being liquidated for betraying her. Although Ekaterina was repeatedly compelled to kill her daughter, she didn't really want to. However, when Osterman fell out with Elizabeth, he wanted to kill her for real. Osterman then realized that he could not pin his hopes on Baturin, who might defect it will. Osterman immediately set out to find Duke Yusupov, Yusupov Ney's father, in hopes of forming an alliance with him. Ekaterina's reign is too vulnerable until Elizabeth and her legacy are removed. The powerful Menshikov has already approached Peter II. Osterman needs allies, too. After a bit of a conniving collusion, Osterman reveals that Elizabeth is there apparent on the edict. The successor to the throne is not from Yusupov's camp, and she's a girl. This upsets Duke Yusupov, who is particularly patriarchal and ambitious. He even tried to poison Elizabeth, so Yusupov sneaked into Yusupov Ney's pharmacy and took a very small bottle of poison and gave it to Osterman, and told him to poison Elizabeth, but the scene of him getting the poison was seen by Yusupov Ney and the three guards, knowing that the potion was poison. The three guards decided to break into the palace to protect Elizabeth. Yusupov Ney stopped them. Now that the three of them are wanted, they'd be doing themselves a disservice. Finally, they decided on a plan. They leave in a carriage, while Duke Yusupov sleeps and split up. Yusupov Ney took the antidote and went to rescue Elizabeth. The three guards would find a place to hide. If that situation changes, they will be able to meet them. On the other hand, Osterman has begun his poisoning program. A bowl of poison, which can kill an elephant, was poured into a cup of coffee by the maid. The coffee was to be delivered to Crown Princess Elizabeth. Elizabeth took her usual sip of coffee, but as soon as she took a sip, she felt dizzy as if she had seen her dead father. Peter the Great. Luckily, Yusupov Ney arrived in time to give Elizabeth the antidote. Lisa. Lisa. The maid who administered the poison realized the plan had failed and rushed to inform Osterman's butler. The butler rushed home to tell Osterman that Yusupov Ney had ruined the plan. Damned. Yusupov Ney's presence meant that Osterman's identity as the poisoner was revealed. However, Osterman soon realized that while assassinating the princess was a capital crime, Duke Yusupov was the one who poisoned her. Yusupov Ney would have covered up for her father. Duke Yusupov? So even if Ekaterina knew about it, what could she do with him without proof? 
Let the poisoner, Dukusapov, take care of it. Then Osterman sent the butler to inform Dukusapov. Что это был ваш идей? Ты кто такой, чтобы отчитывать меня в моем доме? Dukusapov is also furious. Even Osterman had to bow to him. And now, a butler is telling him what to do. And Osterman was trying to clear his name and let him take the blame. Dukusapov decided that when he had the chance, he would cut Osterman into pieces. The two cunning foxes were trying to blame each other. But what they didn't realize was that the princess had no intention of taking revenge. Osterman was her mother's most trusted man. Dukusapov was the father of her best friend and savior. Whoever she seeks to avenge will end up hurting the people she holds dear. Elizabeth decides to take the loss for the sake of her precious relationship. But her mother, Ekaterina, never knew. Now Ekaterina is enjoying a life of wealth, from commoner's daughter to empress of a nation. When Elizabeth has recovered, Yusupov may inform her of the location of the three guards and relay their suspicions. They suspected that Baturin had betrayed them. Unfortunately, women in love are blind. No matter how justified Yusupov Ney's suspicions were, Elizabeth did not believe that her lover would betray her. Instead, knowing that the three guards were safe, she decided to run away with Baturin the day after tomorrow. This shocking decision further inflames the situation. Osterman ordered Baturin to carry out his plan. He will find a way to help them escape from the palace, but he has to get the French spy, Elizabeth, and they eat it all by himself. At the same time, Yusupov Ney informs the three guards of the news. They feel that they can let Elizabeth leave. There must be a plot. But the question is, who can stop the decision of a girl in love? So the three guards decided to follow Elizabeth as she left and see what happened. Just as they were about to leave, Osterman's men came searching. Since Yusupov Ney rescued the princess, Osterman suspected that she was in contact with the three guards. So he sent his men to follow Yusupov Ney. Although the three guards escaped, Yusupov Ney was caught. Osterman sent her home so that Duke Yusupov could teach his rebellious daughter a lesson. Yusupov Ney was beaten up miserably. A few days later, Elizabeth was finally ready to elope. She asked her maid, Mia, to deliver a letter to her mother. In the letter, Elizabeth told her mother that she had no interest in the throne, and she hoped that her mother would not jeopardize her relationship with her daughter through suspicion. To this end, Elizabeth enclosed a document stating that Elizabeth would renounce her right to the throne. Once Ekaterina had proclaimed it, Elizabeth would be a usurper, no matter how she came to the throne. But Mia gave the letter to Osterman, and Osterman burned the letter without reading it in order to secretly kill his sworn enemy, Elizabeth. The next morning, Elizabeth and Baturin left the palace in the fog. The three guards, who had been waiting for them, followed them secretly. Ekaterina soon learned it of Elizabeth's elopement. In fact, Ekaterina had known for some time about Elizabeth's attempt to run away in Osterman's actions. She just didn't know the circumstances surrounding it. Ekaterina suddenly realized that Osterman might betray her. So they went to Osterman and asked him about it to test his loyalty. And Osterman keeps deflecting with the fact that Elizabeth is going to commit treason and go to Paris, and that he's already got men on the ground to capture her. He doesn't say why he's condoning Elizabeth's trip to Paris. This confirms Ekaterina's and Menshikov's suspicions that Osterman is a traitor without a word of truth. Menshikov realizes that Elizabeth's trip to Paris may be more than just treason, but Osterman is running the show. So Menshikov sends Shubin to retrieve the traitor Elizabeth and secretly give her a certain scroll. Although he didn't understand why Elizabeth had become a traitor, Shubin set out with his men, but during the three guards, the French, and Menshikov's troops are all on Elizabeth's trail. How can Elizabeth overcome such a dangerous situation? The guard undresses Princess Elizabeth in a remote inn. He slides his fingers over her skin to experience the beauty of Europe's first beauty. At the same time, Elizabeth's admirer, Garde, crouched at the window and pretended to sleep to calm himself down. A minute later, the three guards found Baturin walking out, refreshed, and followed by a man. The man said that the carriages, the ships, and the testament were ready for France. Tomorrow morning, the men will escort them both to Paris. France, the king of France will reward Baturin. Garde is almost certain that Baturin is a spy, trying to trick Elizabeth into going to France as a puppet. They have to find a way to save Elizabeth, but Garde C also had his doubts. If Elizabeth really wants to go to France as a traitor, should they follow her? Garde was suddenly speechless. They didn't dare to think about it. The next day, Garde sneaks into the hotel when Baturin is now looking to see Elizabeth and takes her away. Elizabeth is so happy to see Garde A safe and sound that she jumps up and down and tries to take him away. Guard A asks her tentatively if she will take the edict to France and fight her way back to Russia to become king. Elizabeth is puzzled. What France? What edict? She doesn't know anything. Guard A is about to explain what's going on when Bajuran suddenly appears. He said that Guard A betrayed them and wanted to take Elizabeth back to Russia. So he started to attack Guard A. Guard A had to fight back with his sword. They fight and explain. Both of them said that the other betrayed Elizabeth. This confused Elizabeth. While the two men were at a standstill, the Frenchman knocked Guard A out from behind. Elizabeth rushes up to check on Guard A, but Baturin stops her. <laughs> at that moment, all the lies pale into insignificance. 
Elizabeth realizes she's been lied to. Elizabeth was dragged to the carriage by Baturing for guard A's safety, the other to guards outside the door. Realizing that the plan had failed, drew their guns and attacked Baturing in an attempt to save Elizabeth. A fierce battle broke out between the decides. The two guards, though intent on killing the traitor, were powerless to do so. They could only watch as Elizabeth was taken away. Then guard A woke up and came out of the room trembling. When he learned that the princess had been taken away, he immediately mounted his horse and prepared to go after her. But then, in a comedic twist, Shubin's men arrived. Since the three guards are now wanted, Shubin and his men surrounded them. So guard A could only tell Shubin that the princess had been robbed. Shubin was nervous and ordered one person to stay behind to guard the three guards, while the others went with him to rescue the princess. On the other hand, Elizabeth asked Baturin why he betrayed her with tears in his eyes. Baturin had no explanation and could not explain. The carriage was not as fast as the horse. Shubin soon caught up with him. The Praetorians, with their superior fighting skills, quickly disposed of the French. Baturin was the only remaining enemy. They were ready to swarm over Baturin. But Baturin was not stupid. He grabbed Elizabeth as a hostage and told them to step back and put down all their weapons. Since the princess is in Baturin's hands, Shubin and the others didn't dare to do anything. So they had to follow Baturin's orders and be subjected to him. They watched Baturin escape after Baturin left. Shubin found the scroll that Menshikov wanted on the Frenchman's body. His next task was to return with a scroll in Elizabeth. On the way back, Elizabeth stared at the sea alone. Everything that had happened to her recently came to her mind. She couldn't understand why everyone, even her mother Ekaterina, would not let her go when all she wanted to do was to live her life in peace and quiet. Was power really so important? Power turns kind uncles into scoundrels. It made a loving mother so cold and heartless. The answer to that question is what Shubin wants to know. He was there the day the Praetorian Guard installed Ekaterina on the throne. Elizabeth fought them off alone. Her kind and brave face stuck in his mind. Shubin couldn't believe Elizabeth would commit treason. He asked Elizabeth what had happened. Elizabeth smiled helplessly and said it was all her father Peter the Great's fault for making her his heir. If Shubin wants to know the answer, he should open the scroll they found. Shubin opens the scroll and reads Peter the Great's edict and learns a great deal about what happened. Shubin swore an oath of allegiance to Elizabeth. The Praetorian Guard is Peter the Great's champion. He will honor Peter the Great's edict and support Elizabeth in defeating the usurper. But Elizabeth still didn't want to take the throne or face the ugly side of power. But what Elizabeth didn't realize was that her desire to protect her loved ones had led to the death of more of them. 